pillars of healthcare, sleep is part of it. If you're intending to live a healthy life, sleep has to be part of it. Sleep is part of the pillars of healthy living. Number one, of course, on the list is diets. And we've talked about diets multiple times and over. Doesn't mean we'll stop. We'll keep on talking about the diets. Number two, of course, is sleep and rest, which we are talking about tonight. Number three is the sun. And number four is fasting. And we've talked about fasting before, right? We also talk about exercise and we've talked about in-depth uh, exercises that you can do to help you either lose weight or uh, gain mass or and all that. Not gain weight unhealth, in an unhealthy way because I see most people taking protein supplements to just bulk. Don't target bulking. Target adding healthy weight and growing muscles because we want you lean. We've talked about fresh air and rehydration with water and salt. Uh, okay, those things are things that you actually are aware of. We cannot manage to talk about sleep without mentioning the types of sleep, what regulates sleep, the hormones involved in sleep, and why we really need that sleep. So brace yourself for that. So number one, we have two types of sleep. But before I go to the types of sleep, allow me to talk to you about that gland on the base of your brain that is called the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a very important gland in sleep regulation. And it has different functions because this is the gland that produces hormones that actually regulate sleep. Uh, Clinton Ortiz, the CEO, welcome on board. So that pineal gland regulates sleep because it produces hormones. And not only sleep, there are very uh, many functions of the pineal gland, and we'll talk about them. We'll even mention the hormones that are involved, uh, that are produced by the pineal gland, so that you get a rough idea of what happens uh, in this process. And number one of it being serotonin, okay? So I want you to know there is something called a biological clock. That biological clock is actually regulated by these hormones. Okay, that are produced by the pineal gland. And also the pineal gland relies on the sun. So the importance of the sun in sleep cannot be underrated. The pineal gland relies on the sun because for you to wake up or for you to go and sleep, it's all about the light. And light and darkness are the ones that stimulate the circadian rhythm or the circadian cycle. That is the work and sleep cycle or the biological clock in a uh, 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 layman's language. So that same same pineal gland once you get exposure to the sun if any case you there is light chances of you sleeping are very minimal but i understand there are people who sleep when lights are on but this is the point you're actually fooling the pineal gland through that light and you know i've always told you when you're going to sleep or in bed put your phones away now those of you who sleep at eight and wake up at four that time even if i'm on live and you like me so much, and you enjoy my content, put your phone away and go to bed. It's that simple. Why? Because that light that is coming from the phone actually fools the pineal gland that is daytime, and then you start struggling with sleep. And remember that biological clock just comes once and goes again. So you have to wait for another cycle. And this is the reason why you can be on TikTok Live watching those uh, that gossip until midnight. And when midnight is here, you have missed other types of sleep. We'll talk about the REM and non-REM sleep when we'll be talking about the types of sleep and you'll understand these types of sleep come at specific hours. So therefore, if you miss that cycle, you will have to catch the next bus, which is quite unfortunate. And that means you will wake up the following day very angry, very tired, zero productivity. And you know very well, all of you have experienced this anger that comes in in the morning. You don't have any motivation to do anything because you did not have enough sleep. Okay? You can easily confirm that. So, there's an interesting book uh, that is talking about natural remedies, and I hope that you can find it and read it. This book. This book is called Natural Remedies for Health and Well-Being. Actually, the guide to natural remedies for health and well-being. And it's written by Enrique Garz. This is a very, very interesting book. And if you can find it, uh, just go through it. And I know, of course, some concepts here are not what we advocate for. But most interesting, interesting on page uh, 202, it talks about insomnia. This is the book that I took a picture and I was telling you about. So that book is very interesting because it gives you some of the natural remedies that you can actually use to enjoy your meals uh, and uh, basically heal from diseases and conditions. But of course, if you're on this platform, you will question that book uh, in some way. Dogo do go up and bali, but uh, all other information there is actually helpful and it can open your head to different things. 
So the hormones that are produced by this pineal gland, number one on the list is serotonin. Serotonin is a hormone that controls or regulates the mood. Now, if you've been here for long, you realize, did you hear us talking about serotonin when we were talking about depression? Yes, of course. We talked about depression and we said that for you to understand depression, you simply use the drugs that are used in depression. So when you understand the drugs and the mode of actions of drugs that are used to treat depression, treat depression, you will simply, you will simply understand how depression functions. And depression is actually deficiency in this neurotransmitter called serotonin. So that's the reason why you are given serotonin reuptake inhibitors, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Those drugs that you take actually inhibit uh, the reabsorption of serotonin. So they ensure that you have enough serotonin in the synaptic cleft. Don't, don't cram that. Just understand that you have enough uh, neurotransmitter, which is serotonin, and then your mood is elated. And now you get from the depressive state into the happy state. But most of you don't want that because it's the longest route. Most of you want quick fix. So the drugs are working for you, of course. Of course. But you understand that drugs for depression will actually cause you depression. And those drugs will actually add you weight, cause your erectile dysfunction. And that is just another load of depression are coming through. And even the suicidal thoughts. So be very keen when you're using those antidepressants. But this is the point. Serotonin is actually an amino acid. No, serotonin is a hormone or a neurotransmitter that actually comes from amino acids. Now, the hormones that I'll mention on this pineal gland, you will realize or you'll bear witness that they are called, most of them are polypeptide amino acids, which basically means they come from meats. They come from protein diets. So if you're a vegan, uh, this is not a conversation for you. Because for you to get these neurotransmitters, you must take uh, the enough amino acids that will actually be converted to these neurotransmitters. And therefore, it's easier when you tell somebody who has depression to fix their gut and enjoy the eggs and enjoy the red meats, the fatty meats in plenty, and their depression just disappears through the window. But that seems like a long process, right? We want a quick fix. We want it to be fixed now and now when we are depressed. So do you think you're depressed or do you think uh, they just convinced you that you're depressed? They made you believe you're depressed. So serotonin is a mood uh, a hormone, mood regulating hormone. So imagine you without sleep. How will be your mood? <laughs> How will be that mood? Tomorrow in the morning in that office, you're pulling chairs. You're all over, punching that keyboard as though it, you, it's your enemy. And anybody, you're just waiting for somebody to touch you so that you can overreact already. And then you apologize when your mood goes back to normal. Okay? So when people lack sleep, of course, problems with the uh, anxiety, nervousness, anger and emotions and depression or depressive mood comes in in the morning. Number two hormone is what we call the melatonin. Melatonin. Now you can just write those hormones down and then as I explain, you get to capture the details. So melatonin. Melatonin is another hormone that actually improves your healing ability. So imagine you without sleep. How will your system start healing from inflammation? How will those joint pains disappear? We have with melatonin, when melatonin is actually your healing hormone, and this is produced by that uh, 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 pineal gland. So it's a very important hormone, a very small hormone, but a very important one for that matter. Okay. Also, melatonin regulates energy, energy in the morning. So this is the this this is a hormone that actually activates your liver to produce glycogen and all that. So imagine the energy that you have in the morning. That's why people say, "I am a morning person." No, no, no. You had good sleep. I am a morning person, okay? The reason is you produce hormones that actually activate the production of energy in the liver. Also remember, at four in the morning, most of us produce the four counter-regulatory hormones, glucagon, growth hormone, uh, what else? Adrenaline and cortisol. These are hormones that actually tell the liver to produce more of the glucose so that it prepares you for a new day. And that's the reason why morning breakfast is one of the most use, uh, useless meals of the day. Because whatever you ate the previous day is actually being pumped into the system to start a new day for you. Okay. And number three hormone is what we call AVT. AVT. AVT is anginine vasotoxin. Anginine vasotoxin. Don't cram it. Don't cram it. I will actually talk about cramming when we talk about the types of sleep. <laughs> So AVT, that one is a hormone for reproduction, is a hormone that lowers your stress levels, is a hormone that helps you also in natural repair. 
is the hormone that helps you get deep sleep. Now, there are two types of sleep. Of course, one is the non-random eye movement sleep, and then we have the random eye movement sleep. So when you're sleeping, there's a moment when your eye, your eyelids are actually uh, like twitching and your eyeballs are still moving. That's what we call the random eye movement uh, phase of sleep. It comes at the earlier stages of sleeping. And when you sleep at this moment in time, you'll remember, you'll dream the dreams that you can actually remember and tell the story. But when you're getting into the uh, non-REM, we call it non-REM, so non-random eye movement sleep, any dream that you dream in that uh, uh, type of sleep, you cannot remember. You will actually have this memory that I had a dream, but I can't recall what I dreamed. I can't recall what I dreamt. Okay? So that's what happens. And now, when you get into the non-REM sleep, the deep sleep, you actually need this hormone, the AVT, to get deep sleep. So if you don't eat good food, if you don't enjoy the sun, if you don't fix the gut, for you to produce this AVT, it will be very difficult. So therefore, you don't get deep sleep. And as we get into the deep sleep, we will start getting to know the advantages of deep sleep. Okay? Yeah. So when you're in the, non, when the REM, the rampant eye movement uh, sleep, if somebody touches you, you're conscious. You can actually wake up. If somebody pinches you, you wake up. But if you're in the REM, my friend, even if somebody touches you, you will not feel it. And that's a good sleep because it takes very minimal time, but it's a deep sleep. It's relaxing. It's an rejuvenating and your body is healing. Your energy levels are very low. Your glucose is very low. And now the system is just relaxing and your muscles are repairing. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? And this hormone, AVT, is actually improved when you are exercising. This is the reason why after a gym session, an hour down the line, you will be very, very sleepy because you have trained, you have exhausted the muscles, you have torn the muscles and the muscle fibers, and now you need sleep to repair so that next day you can carry or lift heavier. So this is the reason why when you exercise, you get deeper sleep because you now produce AVT. So it's actually activated by exercising. And even a walking exercise, just a long walk, that is full body exercise, you will activate this hormone. And as you exercise, you get to sweat. So therefore, you get to ease toxins from the system. Understand this, that these toxins, when they build up in the system and you don't release them, you will end up having problems with the same, same AVT hormone. Because you cannot produce this hormone when your system is highly stressed, when your system is highly having toxins, when your system is on inflammatory foods. So you need to exercise to burn the muscles, to burn the fat and all that, tear the muscles up, and then produce this hormone, get rest. So actually the body was designed perfectly that every time you've done an activity successfully, you need to take a rest. This is to the people who train every single day, Monday to Monday. Monday is back day. Tuesday is leg day. Wednesday is chest day. Thursday is 100, they have full, full hand training. Friday is all this, you're wasting time. You're actually going to improve on stress levels and you're going to lower the anginine vasotocin hormone. Therefore, sleep will be a problem to you. Therefore, muscle repair will be a problem to you. You need to train and rest. The next hormone is what we call the epithalamin. Hey, 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 my peoples. Epithalamin. Epithalamin is the hormone that regulates learning, learning and retaining. So epithalamin is an, a hormone that is produced by the pineal gland that regulates uh, learning and retaining. Do you know that your short-term memory is here? That everything that you cram actually comes here. <laughs> Did you know that? So as you cram for that exam, you're actually clogging a lot of information and setting it here. Now, I don't know if somebody slaps you from behind if you'll be able to remember. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is your, your short-term memory. Your long-term memory is here on the top part, which is the cortex. Okay? The top part of your brain is where we have the long-term memory. Now, for you to move information from the short-term memory to the long-term memory, remember, information is kept in the short-term memory for about 48 hours. So you can cram and remember it for 48 hours, as long as somebody did not disrupt you. <laughs> yeah, this reminds me when 
when we were young and your mother sends you to the shop and tells you buy salt and buy uh, tea leaves and buy chewing gum. And then now you go on the road and you start playing. And you start playing and somebody cheers you up and reminds you of something else. Now you forget yourself and now the memory is gone. It's actually replaced. Now when you head to the shop, and remember now I was sent to the shop. When I head to the shop, I'm like, what did they say? What did my mother say? You now buy what you just remembered. Everything has just disappeared. It's like somebody slapped you from <laughs> behind and you just lost it. But the reality is you kept it in the short-term memory and you did not associate it with anything. You know the saying that says uh, a picture speaks uh, a thousand words? It's equivalent to a thousand words? That is the same thing. If I show you a picture, every time you see this picture, you'll get to remember that this is the health and wellness spot. Right? So you don't need to remember even the names. You just know if this is the picture, if this is the health and wellness spot, it's from uh, Dr. Levy is the one who talks about these things here, and this channel talks about health. So that picture is actually what is associated with the memories. So for you to take information from the short-term memory to the long-term memory, this is for the students who keep on cramming and writing in Okenyas. For you to convert that information from the short-term memory to the long-term memories, number one, you have to put an association. You have to actually make sure that this information that you're putting there, because for it to go to the long-term memory, it will be put in a file. It's, there's a file for that. For that event, for that exam, there's a file for it. So you need to pull out that file from the long-term memory and fix those documents there and then take it back to the long-term memory. And how do you do that? Number one, of course, epithalamine. Raise it. And epithalamine is actually increased, actually increases the production of melatonin. Now, remember this before I even go ahead. We had melatonin as our second hormone and the, the function of melatonin was to improve healing, right? And also to regulate energy. But the, end, the hormone that actually improves the production of melatonin is this epithalamine. So that is the second function. Number one is learning and retaining. And number two is improving production of melatonin. So it's actually playing a role in increased healing and then regulates energy also. So this is a very important hormone. Not only will you have energy in that exam, you will also retain the, the information that you actually read. So when you lack sleep and when you transnight thinking that this is going to change your life for the better. You're busy cramming. You're busy loading your short-term memory. If you don't associate that information with something, with either a picture or an event, you will not remember. You will not remember. What we need to do is we need just to replace that memory by telling you something new and all that information is gone. That's the reason why you walk into an exam room. When you walk into that exam room, before the exam comes, everybody's busy opening new handouts. You, you're wondering, where did this come from? I have not, you have read, yes, you have the information. You crammed the whole night and you slept for one hour. Woke up, went into the exam room at six, you're there because you want to write on the seat because you, you don't even trust your short-term memory. <laughs> and you know why? Because you can easily replace that information. So you're there now, everybody comes in with a new handout. Somebody comes from nowhere with a new handout. And this handout has the information that you have never read. You're actually seeing this handout for the first time. <laughs> Tell me how you'll survive without a Makenya. Because if you decide to read this handout, it will actually do away or replace the information that you've stored in the short-term memory. So it will just replace it. And now you lose everything. And now even what you've, you had crammed and you had prepared for, if at all that handout did not come, you would have passed that exam with flying colors. But because they have replaced the memories, wololo, wololo. <laughs> and this is happening to our students. This thing called transnighting is a waste of your time. What you need is to understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, every other term has to, will come secondary. But the problem is you guys are so fixated in definitions. You want to define something the way it is defined by the lecturer. You're wasting time because when you walk out of that exam and I ask you what was number two, what was the question, uh, what was question number two, you cannot remember because you just went there to pour everything and that is it. What, once you poured everything, Zero. 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 Nothing. So you are actually an educated fool because, yes, you have been educated, but you have never retained anything because you don't have enough epithalamine. So epithalamine will help you remember and recall. And this hormone is actually important because have you ever uh, sat somewhere, just calm, maybe you're having stories and making stories and fun, and then you get to remember something and you laugh. And then you look around and people are looking at you wondering, why are you laughing? They just let, 
You just tell them, ah, let it just be. Because you know that if you ever tell them that story, it's not funny to them. Because it happened in a moment. Yako tu peke yako. That was your moment. And nobody can understand it. Because even if you put it out to them, they will not understand it. So you just tell them, ah, I tell it now. But it's funny to you. Because at that time, it was funny. You associated that event with something else. But now if you think about it in this moment in time, it will not make sense. So you cannot you cannot tell them that actually oh uh, I was just remembering a childhood memory and this is what happened they they are not interested it is not funny but to you because of the events that happened at that moment in time which were funny at that moment in time they are stored as funny in your long term memory so they will always come and they come once in a while and you can read let's say people who read the Bible or the Quran at least for the Quran they memorize it but those people who read the Bible you can read the Bible and you forget about it. And then, when somebody just talks about a certain topic, you can easily remember every single thing about that topic. But you can't remember which verse. Do you know that? Because you did not associate it with the memory. You need to attach something, either a picture or a memory to it, for you to remember it. So when you remember that picture, every other information is released from the long-term memory. And for you to pull information from the short-term memory to the long-term memory, number one, you have to associate it with a picture or an event, which is interesting. And number two, you have to rehearse. So imagine how many times you need to cram information for you to remember it. You have to rehearse. So you have to cram and then walk again and come and cram and walk again and come and cram. By the time you're cramming the fourth time, the exam is here. And somebody came in with a new handout. You did not see it. You're just seeing it for the first time. What do you think will happen? 